Energy stocks having a rough start to the year after a pretty good finish to last year. One of the ETFs, the XLE, that tracks the space down more than 1%. Broader market continues to climb. So what does it need to get a little energy back in this space? Bring in our friend, Halima Croft, RBC's Global Head of Commodity Strategy, to break it all down. Uh, ju I know you just back from Abu Dhabi. That's right. Literally awful plane. A little, you what day is lag, it? What's, yes. It's okay. You look great. I know you're going to nail this. Under eye concealer? Yes. Uh, it's, uh, I got it on, too, yeah. honey. Don't worry about it. All right, so here's the thing. Um, Let's talk about oil because, from what I understand, we had some rocket attacks in Iraq. We had the killing of Soleimani. Right. And yet oil continues to go down. How oversupplied is this world right now? I think once President Trump mm -hmm. said all is well, the market faded geopolitical risk. I think right now they're focusing mm -hmm. on, you know, what the supply picture looks like, what is OPEC going to do. I mean, the trade war, you know, that's still a little bit in the ether. You know, it wasn't as fulsome an agreement as people maybe were expecting. But one thing I'll say is that we had all the concerns about trade war last year. It was really a ceiling on the oil market. But if you look at Chinese demand in 2019, it held up relatively well. I mean, it was 390,000 barrels of growth year on year. That was in line with previous years before we had trade war concerns. So we have the situation where the sentiment is very tied to the trade war concerns, but the physical market in China seemingly not. Why not? Well, I mean, what's interesting is we have healthy demand for things like jet fuel, gasoline. That held up in China this year. Where we had real softness in the oil market, in emerging markets, India. And that was a problem for the oil markets. OEC demand also, not fabulous. But if you look at year on year, the oil market demand, about a million barrels. We're expecting that for next year as well. So I think what's really interesting is the trade war was a really big sentiment story, not as much physical market story. You know, just back, but what's the mood? What's the mood in Abu Dhabi where you are? What's the yeah. mood about the U.S.? What's the mood about the trade war? What's the mood about sort of demand and where Iraq goes? Iraq's I mean, a disaster. What was so interesting was when we took off from JFK, the missiles were flying and people thought, are we going into the third Gulf War? When we landed, people were like, OK, it's over in terms of the market. In Abu Dhabi, it was kind of a wait and see. There were some out there, like General Jones, saying deterrence has been reestablished. The Iranians are not going to do anything else. This was a good thing. And in fact, maybe we'll see regime change in Iran. And there were others that said, look, the shadow war will continue. The Iranians are not done. They are under crippling sanctions. And we're still going to have significant turbulence in the Middle East. So two very distinct views. And Iraq remains very, very messy. I'm not asking you to play stock market here. That's not what we're doing. But big cap, all these integrated big cap names. Exxon Mobil's like at a five, six-year low, pushing towards levels we last saw in October. What's the problem? Stock market all-time high. I mean, is it just their business models are flawed at this point? I mean, I think there's a, a whole host of things. But one of the things actually we've heard a lot about in Abu Dhabi at this conference was the broader concern about ESG, the broader concerns about climate change, and the fact that are these companies, you know, should we even be investing in them? There was a lot of discussion about what does the future look like? Where is going to be the appetite to invest in these companies when everyone is thinking about climate change, ESG? So let me ask you something. You talked about demand not being bad, right? Yeah. China holding up. So what about the supply side? Because oil is where it was two plus years ago. No, I mean, I think one of the things that we're really seeing is, is that, you know, U.S. production has continued to hold up. And this is going to be a very interesting year, and it makes it very difficult for OPEC's planning process. There are a variety of forecasts out there for what U.S. production growth will look like. And so I think that is going to be a key linchpin of this market this year. OPEC is meeting in March. They normally just meet twice a year. They're now having three meetings this year because I think they need to have a rapid response mechanism depending on where the U.S. picture looks like. But again, they will admit that's something they came out and said. They are very concerned about misjudging the U.S. supply picture this year. What, what, do you, what are the odds that the red line statement? So, the, so President Trump's red line is loss of U.S. US lives. lives. Yes. So what are the odds in your mind? Do you think so when, when Trump said everything's OK, we're good, this is neutralized, are the uh, did the uh, Iranians get the memo on that or is there can we see this ratchet up? And if so, do you just sell any pop that you see in the energy supply because it is a head fake? I mean, one thing to really watch is what happens with the upcoming parliamentary elections in Iran. If we have a hard line victory, I think we're likely looking at elevated tensions. If the moderates, though, win, 
perhaps there is a potential for an off-ramp. But sanctions remain key. I mean, they are really struggling under the weight of these sanctions. I mean, you're looking at inflation at 35 percent. GDP is supposed to contract again by 10 percent this year. They are really facing what they see as economic warfare. So as long as they remain under those sanctions, I think the risk of, again, the shadow wars, the rockets flying at these bases in Iraq, something serious could happen still. This is not done. So, uh, you know, the point you were making on China is interesting. A lot of that demand, from what I've read, uh, some of that demand has come from inventory build. And so what, are you concerned at all that they kind of ratchet down as they kind of draw down those inventories? Or do you think they're just going to continue to ramp up? I mean, what I think is interesting is we were seeing the inventory builds. Because, again, if you think about, you know, China takes barrels from places like Iran, from Venezuela. There was some stockpiling. But we actually see now inventory draws in China. So this isn't just the case of them stockpiling. So, again, when we look at the Chinese market this year, we're not saying it's spectacular growth mm -hmm. like we saw, you know, a decade ago. But we think it's solid growth. We think where you need to be watching, though, for the demand picture is actually India.